Thank you, Momo. Hello to everybody today. I actually um, thought this was going to truly be a session to see if I could turn uh, slow enough uh, so that you don't get dizzy and neither can I. It looks like I'm spared the uh, 360, so um, maybe at 270 I actually don't have to move. Um, so at least um, this is very innovative and it's very different. Um, and I enjoy learning new things, so um, I was glad to give it a try. Uh, and we'll see um, if I actually do get dizzy and fall. So um, I want to speak to you today uh, about inclusion. Uh, I think we heard uh, all three speakers before me uh, refer to it in one way or another. Uh, but I really want to tie the business um, imperative uh, with the need for inclusion. And uh, I truly believe uh, that this is a paradigm change uh, that we're going through in the Israeli society, business and otherwise, um, but we're far from where we need to be. So if you look um, at the world population, uh, the world population is growing, uh, we all know that. So the economies are going to have to grow if we're going to be able to sustain, maintain, and feed uh, these populations. Uh, we know from looking at uh, what business um, indicators we have uh, that world economies uh, are not where uh, we hoped or predicted that they would be uh, in terms of percentage growth. And therefore, um, we have to make sure uh, that in Israel we cause growth uh, by growing uh, the populations uh, that take part uh, in the economy. Uh, we also know that that's not the current situation uh, by any way or means. Uh, you can see that in a population of just over eight and a half uh, million people in Israel, um, we have 21% uh, of that population uh, are from the Arab population and um, about 10% uh, are from the ultra-Orthodox. Uh, we obviously can look uh, at the basic gender difference. Uh, women are 50% uh, of the population, just above. Uh, and I think it's only the Canadian Prime Minister uh, who turned around and said, um, I'm going to put 50% of my ministers uh, from, uh, who are women. And when he was asked why uh, he wants to do this um, by a very rude journalist, he turned around and said, because it's 2015. This was last year when he did it. And he refused... Uh, to elaborate any further uh, on this explanation. Uh, and personally, I embrace that. Uh, I believe it's time we stop having to explain why uh, women should take part in whatever. Uh, we should because we're 50% and we want 50% of the goodies. So ladies. I don't think the majority of the audience are women, but they certainly do know how to make themselves heard when given the opportunity. Ladies. Okay, so when we, when we try and answer the question, uh, what actually hinders inclusion, uh, we can take a cut at it from three different aspects. Uh, the one is gender, which I just mentioned. The second is religion, that we'll go into a little more, and I'll try not to step into too many booby traps here. And the third is culture. And um, I'm going to start uh, actually with an example from culture that's not ours, because sometimes when we talk about other people, it's easier for us to agree uh, that there is a problem, and this is what the problem looks like. So <clears throat> this is actually a real photo uh, of a real company um, that I visited in Japan. 
And uh, you can see that it's a very hierarchical room. The person at the top of the table is the most senior. Uh, only men sitting around the table. And I can tell you that the first time uh, that I came to do a serious visit in Japan, um, I needed to use the restroom. Imagine. There was no restroom for women in the managerial building that I was invited to attend. And this caused a huge stir uh, when, they f when they understood that I'd been traveling for many, many hours and that this was not a problem that was going to go away. Um, we ended up agreeing that it would be quicker than instead of them closing the men's bathroom and making it uh, suitable, I would go down to the factory uh, where guess who were the workers uh, and use the ladies' bathroom there. So Japan has um, made a little bit of progress. This is uh, the same uh, company. The table is now round. Uh, and there is one lady uh, sitting at the table, and by the way, she's not the secretary, and she's not the tea lady, uh, which, was the which were the two classical roles uh, of women in Japan. Now, I, I say, and I purposely chose uh, an example on culture that's not from our world, because as I said, it's easier for us to agree uh, if it's coming, it's their problem, it would never happen with us. Uh, but unfortunately, we all know that that's not true. Um, and if we have time during the questions, um, I'll be glad to refer to that further. Now, what does this gap do? And what this pyramid shows is if these are the uh, different levels of participation from a gender perspective, um, and you look at junior, middle management, senior management, and executives, there's a huge chunk missing there uh, from the women. Now, that does two things. A, it causes paucity of opinions because women think differently from men, not better, not worse, just differently. And second, it means that you have to go deeper down into the male population to get top talent than you would if you used everybody basic mass. So it's much better for the business world to be able to choose from everybody and not limit uh, themselves to 50%. So the gender gap uh, that's very clearly reflected here uh, is something that we all need to be aware of and we all need to be thinking about and we all need to talk about and we all need to refuse to accept. Culture and religion. Um, we've done a lot of things in Intel uh, to bridge these gaps. And the, w the picture that you can see um, on the right is a picture, on my right, is a picture of uh, a visit that I made with, uh, in Julis because we wanted to increase the level of participation of technicians uh, from this community, from the Druze community uh, in the Galil. And in order to achieve it, um, I went to visit with the Czech and said, please bring me some more. And he said, well, um, you know, it's very far and they have to go home every day. And I said, fine, you bring me the technicians, enough to fill a bus. And every shift we bus um, technicians from Yoknam to Kiryat Gat every single day three, uh, on both the day shift and the night shift. And we filled the buses. Um, they gain um, very good salaries. We gain excellent technicians. And I think, uh, as the Minister Erdan referred to earlier, it's a win-win for everybody when this thing works properly. <laughs> On the other picture, uh, you can see uh, the rabbis from Kiryat Gat. Uh, the rabbis of both communities, the Sephardic and the Ashkenazi communities, uh, side by side, uh, when they came to um, put the mezuzot uh, onto the, uh, when we first opened the building, uh, and you can see uh, that their main concern uh, to me was not what you think, 
their main concern was how do we create more jobs for the community at large and the religious community in particular uh, to be able to make um, to help increase the participation in the uh, job circle uh, and also to increase increase wages because obviously uh, wages in Intel uh, are a little higher uh, than they can earn outside. Um, so in summary, uh, I want to say that it is our job, our being the business communities, the, um, all the social responsible organizations, uh, and, the mon and the government uh, to work on changing perceptions. We have to influence policy. I think you heard uh, very clearly from the minister uh, of his uh, intentions around policy, uh, but we have to really change policy. We have to keep building awareness because if we don't acknowledge uh, that there is a problem, uh, we don't work on the problems and therefore we don't change anything. And more than anything, if I assume that people who are sitting here are the converted, uh, preaching to the converted doesn't help, but asking the converted to pass it on certainly does help. And I think we all need to agree uh, that we all win uh, when we're more inclusive. So thank you very much.